Hello and welcome back to our channel. So today we have something really interesting for you guys. So YOLO V8 just dropped and it is the next big thing in the world of computer vision and AI. I can't wait to check it out. But to better understand what we'll be doing in this video, let's look at a small introduction of what exactly is YOLO V8. So YOLO V8 is a state-of-the-art real-time object detection model developed by a company called Ultralytics. It is an improved version of the original YOLO model and it is considered to be one of the fastest and the most accurate object detection models to date. So, you might be wondering, what's so special about YOLO V8? Why is it the best one yet? Well, to know the answers, let's ask ChatGPT. Yes, so we have got the answer from ChatGPT. Now I will make the answer a little bit condensed and easier to understand for people who have who are new to YOLO and YOLO V8 and any kind of computer vision models of object detection, right? So it is one of the first versions of the YOLO model that uses the SPPNet architecture. Right, so this architecture is structured in such a way that it improves the model's ability to detect small objects and to enhance its overall accuracy. So determining the data that you have to train your model can impact the very output of your model greatly. Right, so YOLO V8 has been trained on the COCO dataset which contains more than 330,000 images and 80 categories, making it one of the most diverse and the standardized data, data sets for object detection. So let's check that out right now. Right, so this is the COCO data set and it is used extensively for object detection and it contains more than 330,000 thousand images and these are some of the examples that are there and you can download the paper of release for the Microsoft Coco data set from here if you want further information about it and this is also used for classification as there are over 80 different categories of images now coming back to the advantages of YOLO V8 some of you might have heard of this term called data augmentation if not, no worries. Data augmentation is nothing but a technique to improve the model's ability to generalize to new images. This technique artificially increases the size of the training data set by applying various transformations to already existing images. For example, when an image is flipped or rotated in certain angles, the model will consider the new image to be an other image in the same data set which makes the model more accurate because now we have more data than we did before. So these are the condensed versions of why YOLO V8 is one of the best object detection models yet and I cannot wait anymore to see YOLO V8 in action so without further ado let's jump right into it. So the first thing we'll be checking out is the YOLO V8 documentation, right? So every model that is released will have an official documentation. And since YOLO V8 was released by Ultralytics, we go to the original Ultralytics website's documentation, which will have all the proper information, right? So this is the Ultralytics YOLO V8 documentation. And here they've given a brief history of the YOLO models that they have released previously, right? So we do have the YOLO V3 model, the YOLO V2 as well, the YOLO V4, the YOLO V5, and YOLO V8 as well, right? So that is the latest version. And here below, now you can see all the information that is related to YOLO V8. So YOLO V8 is considered highly efficient and it can run on various hardware platforms from CPUs to GPUs. So if you do not have a costly GPU that can run a object detection models very smoothly, no worries, YOLO V8 can run on CPU as well. It is that powerful and flexible. 
So let's go back to the top. As you can see here, they have given the links for the GitHub and the DOI, the Docker pull, the Kaggle, the Gradient and the Collab one, right? So first we'll be checking out the Collab because it's very easy to run on the Collab. It doesn't require any kind of setting up of an environment or anything. You can just go to Collab and you can just run the code. One thing that we need to understand is when Ultralytics released YOLO V8, they released it under their package, right? So if you are a Python coder, you know what a package is. If not also, no worries. Package in Python is a set of code that is written by someone else and we can just simply import that package and use all the functionalities and utilities that you need that are present within the package in your code, right? So that is how simple YOLO V8 is. The YOLO V8 model has been uploaded into the Ultralytics package. So all you have to do is install it using the pip install command and import the package and check whether everything is imported. And once you do that, you're ready to go. Here in Collab, they have given us two methods of using the YOLO V8 model. So the first thing is using it through the Ultralytics package. And the second thing is cloning the whole GitHub repository and using the functionals and utilities inside it. This is the command line interface of how to use the YOLO V8. So you really don't have to sit and write a code where you import the model and use that to detect. You already have a command line command, right? So this is the command that you give in the Windows command line and this will directly run the model on the path that you're mentioning here, right? So we will have a closer look at this command. So the first keyword is YOLO, right? Task is equal to detect. So we are all, the first thing that they're doing is using this model to detect on an image, right? So the task is detect and the mode is predict and the model is YOLO v8.pt. So the more we get into the GitHub code of this particular model, we'll understand the different weights that are there. So model is equal to is nothing but the weights that they are providing. YOLO V8 has, the Ultralytics has trained the YOLO V8 with the Coco data set. And this is the weight that they are providing. So what we are doing is we're simply giving the model is equal to for that particular weight. That's it. And this weight is directly available in the internet. You can simply download and give it. And since if you are going to be cloning the GitHub repository, then you don't really have to download the weight separately. It will come along with this. And the next parameter is the confidence. So confidence is basically how confident the model is about its classification or detection. So 0.25 represents 25%. So if the model is 25% confident that that particular object is, let's say a person or a car or a bike, right? So then it will display that detection on the image. If it is less than 25%, that kind of detections will be discarded. And the next parameter that we are giving is source. Source is equal to, here is where we'll give the image that we want to detect using the YOLO V8. So here they have given this particular image of Zidane and it's provided by Ultralytics itself. So this is a standard image that people use for object detection. Let's see what the output is. So this is the image and as you can see, the tie is very clear, the person, two persons are very clear and the confidence is very high, right? So 0 0.81, 0 0.79. So these are very high confidences. And that is why YOLO V8 is one next big thing to look out. So this is the most basic way to use the model to detect the objects on one particular image. And we have seen how to do that in the Google Collab, right? So next thing we'll be doing is doing the same in our very own environment in our system locally, right? So what we're going to be doing is we are going to the GitHub page 
to check out the code. So how to do that? So go to YOLO V8 and as you can see there's a GitHub link here. So go into that and this is the official GitHub repository of Ultralytics YOLO V8. As you can see this is the comparison of different models of YOLO V5, YOLO V6, YOLO V7 and YOLO V8. So the dark blue line is YOLO V8 and as you can see the kind of accuracy that it is producing is tremendous compared to all the other models right so this is why we're excited and we're looking forward to using this and as you scroll down here's the information about ultralytics live sessions and youtube channels so you can check that out for any more information about yolo v8 and here is what we need so this is how you use ultralytics in your system so first thing you need to be doing is create an environment right so we'll do that I'm going to open my anaconda prompt so if you don't have anaconda prompt you can simply go to Google and type anaconda download and this is the anaconda distribution and you can select your OS right so you can select your OS if it is Windows and you'll have the particular windows here and if it is Mac for Mac and if it's Linux it's also for Linux so we have the anaconda prompt right here and what we'll be doing is we'll be creating we'll first see if the command is working so conda is the base command Yes, we have Conda installed and it's working well. So what we'll be doing is Conda create YOLO V8 test, right? So that is the name of my, okay, I need to give a hyphen N for name. So this is the command to create a new environment. So Conda create hyphen N and the name of your environment. and give yes okay so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to activate the environment so it's going to activate yolo v8 hyphen test yes now we are there inside the environment and the first thing that we need to be doing is pip install ultralytics right so before that there are some packages that some requirements are there right so we need we need to make sure our pytorch is greater than or equal to 1.7 and our pythons uh, between 3.10 and 3.7 right so no issues we will still install ultralytics and this kind of dependencies will show and then we can proceed from there so i'll try to install Okay, so what is the problem here is I do not have torch, right? My, my torch is not greater than 1.7.0, obviously, because it's a very new environment and I do not have anything installed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google and say in install torch version 1.7.0. okay so for installing the pytorch version so this is the command right so conda install pytorch okay so this is linux and windows conda install pytorch is equal to the version torch vision torch audio and cuda toolkit okay so we do not need cuda to be compulsorily there because if we, we want to use it in the cpu then we cannot do it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to search PyTorch for CPU. So my PyTorch build is stable. OS is Windows. Package is Conda. Language is Python, of course. And compute platform is CPU. 
right so if you have cpu then you go for cpu if you have cuda 11.6 or 11.7 well and good you can go for that but right now i will demonstrate for cpu right because it can work very easily on gpus but cpu there are certain tweaks that you're supposed to be doing and i'm doing it right now so select the cpu and you can see this unique command that is there so copy this go to the environment paste it run it proceed y and the necessary packages are being installed yes the packages are installed and we'll try installing the ultralytics again now there shouldn't be a problem okay so we'll go back to the documentation and see what's the next step so pip install ultralytics and here is where we saw in the collab of this concept called weights right so inside models we have the yolo v8n so once you click that this yolo v8 n.pt is downloaded right so this you can manually download it or the codes that they have given are written in such a way that it will manually download if you don't have it in your system right so that is not an issue at all so this yolo v8 n.pt we saw it here so if you guys didn't understand where that came from it's basically the trained model right so the trained model that they're giving and here the it, these are different versions of the model and each, each versions have different parameters that they are trained on and you really don't have to understand the actual meaning of what this is you can have an experiment you can use each model to detect your particular video or or the picture and you can see which model is better for you right so that really isn't a place where you need to be very technical and deep about it so we're skipping that right now and what we need to know right now is these are models that we'll be using to detect right and these are some integrations that yolo v8 can be done with so roboflow is a is a tool online open source tool that can be used to train models with data sets you can create data sets by uploading your data set and you can do annotations on them you can do segmentations on them so roboflow is a very good tool if you are looking forward to creating data sets and creating new models also it also creates a platform where it runs your object detection model online and clear ml is another such platform where you can train your model and also visualize your results and comet new is also one such thing neural magic so this is something new that yolo v8 is integrated with this is not available in most of the other object detection models and this is very exclusively available for yolo v8 and i would recommend you to check all these out right yeah and that's it we will go back to the code and see what is the progress yes so ultralytics is installed so wh what are we going to do so we look at that code right so we have installed ultralytics so where do we get the code from we get the code from here so yolo task is equal to detect mode is equal to predict model is equal to yolo 8 n dot pt so copy this and paste it here right so we'll review this code once again so what it means task is detect so we're going to detect mode is predict and model is yolo v8 nano.pt so n stands for nano and confidence is 25 you can increase the confidence if you want also it will give you a clearer detections instead of false detections the if the confidence is higher the number of false detections will be lesser so that is the use of confidence and source will be zidane yes okay we will run this now Yes, our model has detected 
two persons and one die at the time of 298 milliseconds which is pretty fast resolution of the image and this is the shape of the image and the results are saved and in runs detect predict 3 right so i have my environment in c users acer so i'll go there c users acer and in runs i have detect i have predict 3 and yes i have my zdn image with the predictions i have by persons as 0.81 and the person as 0.79 and the tie is 0.37 right so right now let me take a minute to demonstrate the importance of confidence in this particular detection right so we had the confidence as 0.25 and tie is at 0.37 so obviously it's greater than 0.25 and we are able to see it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the confidence to let's say 0.5 it is a little bit unrealistic, but just for the sake of an example, we're doing it. Okay, now my results are saved in Drunz Detect Predict 4. So this is Predict 3. Go to Predict 4. As you can see, the tie is now missing. Right? So this is how you play with the model, right? So if you have a lot of detections that are very less confident and they're not clear in the picture for example then you can increase your confidence make your whole model do a much cleaner work when compared to how it was doing before right so this is why you need to understand the parameters of execution yes so we're back in the code and we have successfully used the yolo v8 nano model to detect and classify objects in a image right so we have seen yolo v8 in action and it is simply amazing the results are mind-blowing and one more thing that i need i will leave you guys with is go to chat gpt right and when i saw this i was mind blown right so chat gpt is well aware of YOLO V8 and all its functionalities and all the new things that YOLO V8 is giving us, right? So if you want any information about YOLO V8, how to use it, you can simply go type whatever question you have about YOLO V8 to chat GPT and it'll give you all the answers. And one more thing that is something that you guys need to try is this is simply an implementation of the model right so if you want to tweak the model to detect custom data or if you want to compare the fps of yolo v8 and yolo v7 using a video right you don't need to worry if that code is very complex or anything you can simply go to chat gpt yes so the only thing about chat gpt is you need to know how to ask the right question so yolo v7 versus yolo v8 fps comparison code i asked for it and it is giving me the code to compare the detection of yolo v7 and yolo v8 and here i will give a simple explanation of what this is actually doing so we are loading the yolo v7 model we're loading the yolo v8 model and we're capturing the video and this is the path where you give the video video.mp4 and we're setting the frame height and width and so this is the starting time and after all the detections so we'll give an end time and the starting time minus end time divide i mean the inverse of the difference would give us the fps and you can compare them side by side right so writing code in yolo v7 and yolo v8 has made has made much simpler because of chat gpt so if you're trying to do a project using yolo v7 and yolo v8 do not fear you can always use chat gpt to write your codes for you right so i hope you understood what is chat I mean what is yolo v8 the impact of yolo v8 on the future of computer vision and ai I hope you understood the magnitude of the technological advancement that this is going to provide, right? So thank you so much for watching and we'll meet in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.